Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and today we're gonna be discussing something really interesting and something exciting a new feature that came within .NET 8. So we're gonna be seeing how we can actually access members that are private within a class. So before the release of .NET 8, we had to rely on reflection in order for us to do all of this. It's not the safest way, it's not the best way, but it got the job done. So within .NET 8, stuff has changed, new implementation has been added in order for us to do this. So let's jump into the code and see how it's implemented. So what I have here is I have an empty console application. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna be adding a class user and we're trying to mimic some of the implementation that we might find ourselves need to access those private numbers. So we're gonna have two types of numbers. So first of all, I'm gonna have a private string. I'm gonna call this username, for example. I'm gonna put my username as Muhammad Lawan. And then I'm gonna have another private member sorry, private method, it's gonna return a string, and I'm gonna say here, password updated, for example, and then here I'm just gonna return a simple string saying password has been updated successfully. So right now, as we can see here, I have one private member and one private method. So if I do something like this, var user equal new user and then i put for example var username equal user dot as you can see here i'm not able to access the username because it's a private member or in other ways if i want to for example get the status update i cannot even access the status update because it's also it's a private method which i'm not able to access to it so before .NET 8, and I'm gonna put here before .NET 8, what I needed to do is I needed to use reflection in order for me to act. And the way that I was able to access this is by the following. So let's see how we would access the, access the username. So we're gonna start first by saying type of, and then I'm gonna specify as type of user, and then I'm gonna say get field. So we're gonna ask in the username, and then here what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the field name, which is gonna be username. And then here what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna specify my binding flags. So I'm gonna say it could be an instance. And I also wanna say, or binding flags, it's non-public. So once I have done this, what I wanna do is I'm gonna do the following. I can put console.write line. And then what I can do here is I can put username dot get value, and then I put user, which is the class that we have initiated. Now, if I run this, I put dot not run, we'll be able to see that I got Muhammad Lawan as my username. Again, I don't recommend doing all of this. Accessing private numbers in a class is basically breaking the structure of a class, but for some reasons uh, or some scenarios, you might need to do so. So please use any of these and very, very carefully, depending on the use case that you might have. But right now, we're just going to be discovering those features rather than discussing why should we or we shouldn't we utilize them. So as we can see here, using reflection, I was able to extract my username. The other way, if I want to access right now my password, if it's going updated or not, what I can do here is I can put var password status and then again similar I can put equal type of and then it's the, gonna be type of user but the difference here is gonna be get method and it's gonna ask me about the method name that I want to utilize and it's gonna be password updated and then I'm gonna specify the same binding attribute so binding flags, dot instance, and non-public. Once I've done this, what I need to do here is I need to invoke it. And then once I invoke it, I need to pass the class that I created, which is called user, and I need to pass an array of empty objects. Perfect. So now if I put console dot right line and I pass my password status and put dot not run, we'll be able to see that I got my username as well. I got password has been updated successfully. So through this reflection, and this is before .NET 8, I was actually able to get access to these two private method as well as private field directly through reflections. So another thing that I want to do here before we discover the stuff within .NET 8 is I want to actually check the time for this because we want to discuss the optimization that .NET 8 has might have brought into this. So I'm going to put time and I'm going to put .NET run and this should tell me the amount of time it took to execute this utilizing reflection. So now if I run this, we can see that this took 0.74 seconds to be completed and it took uh, basically 102% of CPU. So we can see here it's pretty, pretty fast. Again, this is a very simple application that doesn't have anything. Now let's see how we can actually do this within .NET 8. So .NET 8 changed this for us. So I'm going to put here post.NET 8 and what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a new class. I'm going to call it user access and then inside this class, this is going to be the interesting part. I need to define attribute and the first attribute is going to be unsafe accessor and basically here I'm telling .NET that I want to access something which is unsafe for me or I'm not even allowed to access and then unsafe assessor kind so here I need to tell it if it's a field it's a method let's start with the field and then what I need to do is I need to provide the name and the field that I want to access it's going to be username so once I have done that 
Now I need to pay, basically utilize this public static extern rough string. I'm gonna call it get username and it's gonna take user user. So now with this, what I can do is, I'm just gonna comment these out that we have done before. We already got the timings that we needed for it. So now all I need to do, I put var username equal user access dot get username and I'm gonna specify the user class that I initiated before. And now if I put console dot write line and I'm gonna put username and let's run this. So I'm gonna put time dot, dot not run. I know it's not the same, but we can see the functionality. So we can see now it's already getting a bit slower. Let's run it again. We're almost getting the same time, but this is with one. Now this is how we can access a field. Now let's see how we can access a method. Again, it's gonna be the same thing. So I'm just gonna copy this and put it here. So instead of field, I'm gonna put a method and the method name is gonna be password updated. So we're gonna put this like here and then we're gonna call it get password status and here because we are password is wrong we don't really need a rough when it comes to actually getting a password so we're gonna save this and here all i'm gonna put is var get password status actually without the get we just put password status equal user access dot get password status and it will take the user and here all i'm gonna do is just pass the password status so now if i put dot not run again we can see here that within this dot not run we were able to get the time of 0 0.77 uh, but the thing that i'm really interested in here is the system utilization which is here 90 percent or while the other one was just at least one or two percent. I know these numbers are negligible because it's a very small application. We don't have anything else running, but this is just something to keep in mind. So we can see through this that I was actually able within .NET 8 to actually streamline my approach in order for me to access private members within my classes and my objects, uh, utilizing some attributes that .NET 8 has introduced. And we can see how this is a much more easier to read and much more easier to understand than actually trying to utilize the reflection and we can see here that we can actually have all of this easily managed within a class in order for us to access those, pub those uh, private members and as well the methods so i hope this video was helpful just to shed light on some of the new features within dotnet 8 if you have any questions please make sure you put them in the comments down below if you like this video please like share and subscribe it would really help the channel if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon or buy me a coffee with that said thank you very much for watching and have a great day